Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to look at a very interesting problem. I have some new old stock motors that I bought about 10 or 15 years ago. These are 8 wire stepper motors. They were purchased from Hobby CNC and the model number is a 23-200-DS8. I assume the 23 is a NEMA 23. The 200 means 200 ounce inches. The DS8 I assume stands for 8 wires. I wasn't too concerned when I started building my CNC machine because I had some paperwork on the motors that I'd purchased. Sadly, the 23200 DS8 was not among the documentation. Again, I'm not too worried. I did a quick Google search. I found some information online. Over at cnczone.com, there was a, a couple of threads. User Tercero had a few questions about the same motor. He rang it out with a digital multimeter and found out which coils were attached to which colored wires but he had no idea how to hook them up to make them work with a gecko. User Jalesi tried to help, but the information he provided was wrong. He hooked it up that way, the motors wouldn't turn, a lot of uh, extra current coming out of the power supply, and generally it wasn't working. So if this sounds interesting, follow me along as I try to figure out which wire goes where with the eight wire stepper motor. This is a close up of the 23200 DS8 stepper motor. As you can see, it's a dual shafted motor. It has eight wires on it and we're going to try and figure this out. We have to find out which wires go to the individual coils. There's going to be four coils and then we have to figure out the phasing to make sure that we can put it into a bipolar situation. I want to make this into a, pol uh, a parallel configuration so that we've got lots of speed. So here we go. The motor as it comes has individual wires. I don't know how well this will focus but they are not tinned, they're stranded, they, uh, well, they're just not ready to be used. So what we're going to do is twist them to make a nice tight group of wires and then we're going to put some solder on it, commonly known as tinning, and that will allow us to connect leads to it or connect it up to the final wiring. Using Kester solder it is rosin core. Take the wire, twist it clockwise, get your solder ready for the solder iron, and apply some heat to the wire and we should get a nice bond. I have a digital multimeter set for continuity. I'm going to go through individual wires and try and find a pair. I'm working on green to orange, nothing green to white, nothing green to black, nothing green to red, nothing green to brown, nothing green to blue, nothing Green to yellow. Oh. So green and yellow are one coil in this motor. Then we'll go along, we'll take grab another wire, red, and we'll go through the different colors again. So red and blue are a coil. And we'll carry on doing that for the rest of the coils. Once we found them out, we'll make a little chart. A couple of minutes with the multimeter and this is what we've got. Let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit better. So you can see for the model number 23200 DS8 there are eight wires, four coils, brown black, red blue, white orange, yellow green. Eight wires, four coils. Now we have to figure out how to join them to make it a parallel configuration for our Gecko 201 stepper driver. Now I'm going to use a dual trace oscilloscope. I'm using the Rigol DS1052E. It's a digital oscilloscope but you can use an analog. You don't need any high speed scope for this. Right now I've got my probe on channel A tied to the blue 
the ground on it is the red. That is the first coil. We just arbitrarily picked that. And now we're going to try and find out which coil corresponds with it. We'll just work our way through them. Once I find one that is uh, in phase, we'll know that that is the same coil we can tie together. I've got the second channel hooked up to green on the probe, yellow on the ground. Now I'm going to spin the motor and when we do that, generate electricity showing up on the oscilloscope. So let's have a look at the scope. Okay, let's give the motor a spin and we'll see what we've got. You can see the signals are going exactly opposite each other. That means we've got the right phase, but we just have to change the leads around. So I'm going to change, green is going to be now the ground, yellow is going to be the probe. Give it another spin. And now you can see they're in phase. So that is one coil. We'll do that for the rest of them and once we've rang them out with the scope we'll know what coils we can tie together. After about 15 minutes of testing with the oscilloscope I've determined that there are two distinct coils. A plus and A minus has the blue yellow on the top, red green for A minus. The B side is white black and orange brown. I've now got it hooked up. There's my gecko, my USB CNC and the actual motor. I've got Mach 3 running right now. I'm going to click the reset and then I'm going to hit the page up. I'll put some tape on that shaft so you can see it spin. Okay we've got the motor hooked up, got some tape on it so you can see it spin. Here's page up. It spins towards me and that goes backwards. Page up, page down, page up, page down. So, all in all, a success. I'm going to be using these motors for my Y-axis and two of them for my Z-axis. Well, I was pleasantly surprised when I figured out how to hook this up. Initially, when I hooked it up to the Gecko Control and nothing happened, I thought to myself, oh no, more money out the window. But with a few minutes of tinkering around with an oscilloscope and a digital multimeter, I was able to figure out how to hook it up. Now I'm completely happy and I'm going to be reusing the three motors that were destined for the bin. I hope this helps somebody out there. Sometimes a lack of information is uh, devastating. So if you happen to have a few of these stepper motors out in the garage, dig them up, hook them up, and use them. As always, if you found this interesting or slightly amusing, click the thumbs up, give me a subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you.